Me all right? My name's Paul, I've got autism, and I make random videos based on my version of autism and the way my head works, and I stick the videos on the internet in case you fancy giving them a watch. I hope you're all doing all right. Um, I'm not going to do too much of an intro this week because I just want to get into this topic because I think I've cracked the code to why we're just not getting anywhere in progressing with autism, and I'm excited and I want to talk about it. Um, but what I will say, the only thing I am going to share is I did get an email from someone who said that my intro, the, you all right, my name's Paul, they said, it's boring, change it. No. There you go, mate. That's how the world works. You don't like something, I ain't changing it. So uh, you now need something else to complain about somewhere else. Anyway, I hope everybody else is doing all right. So. I want to talk about why I don't feel autism progresses. And what I mean by that is, you know, I was diagnosed when I was 33, 34. Can't remember now, you know, as every day goes on, it's another day I get older. And not one thing has got better. None of it. I don't know what it was like before that, but ever since then, nothing has improved. Nothing's got better. We've not made any better discoveries. We're not doing anything. We're just all plodding on. Society still doesn't work for us. We still don't fit into society to a degree. They still all the same obstacles. So why are we still in the same place? Years have passed. Years. So why aren't we getting anywhere? And I think the answer is very, 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 very simple. You will all know the answer too. But quite simply, autism makes money. Now, this isn't any part of any revelation whatsoever. I'm just saying I find that this is a real reason why we don't progress. Because why would you want to correct something that makes you money? I remember years and years and years ago, there was an arcade machine that if you pressed a series of the buttons on the hold buttons on this arcade machine, it would allow you to enter it to change the payout limit. Now, I knew this because I was working in the arcade. So what did I do? I would change the payout limit and I would play that machine and I would earn enough every day. I wasn't earning enough to buy a house. What I was actually earning money for was to buy a Burger King for me, for me food every day, pay for a taxi home and pay for a taxi there the next day. And then I would repeat that process. and. It worked. So do you know what I didn't do? I didn't tell the boss because there was nothing wrong with the take-ins. There was nothing wrong with the payouts, except I adjusted the payout limit because I could. So I never, ever fixed that problem. And I still remember that code to this day. And I will still try and press it into machines, just wondering if it still works. So what I mean by my example there is if I am benefiting from something that makes me money, why would I stop doing it? And autism makes money. So you look at a lot of where autism makes money. You look at a lot of where the research is. A lot of it is in people trying to figure out why we are born with autism. Why are we born with it? What causes is it? Is it a nutritional thing during pregnancy? Is it something inside the womb? Is it, related? Is it hereditary? Is there something linked there? Um, you know, is, is it something to do with once you're born, not getting certain new, to, what, what is it? What is it? What is it? And they're always trying to find something out. And you've got all these different learned professors and these people with fancy PhDs around the world in the white coats and those big science glasses, holding up a beaker, all trying to figure out what makes people autistic. Now, my problem is, what's your problem? Are you doing these kind of tests on why people are not autistic? Have you got any cross-examination data from that side of it? Why are people not born with autism? Because if you're not, what's your problem with me? Why am I a problem? Why are you trying to find out? You're trying to cure autism? Don't try and cure autism. I love my autism. I'm glad I'm not you. You know, so it's very unusual. So they're always trying to put the emphasis in why we are born with it. And a good example of that is there's a, there was a test done in China where they cut the whiskers, and I need you to bear with me on this. They cut the whiskers off mice that were between the age of 12 and 16 days old. And then they revisited these mice when they were about two months old and did a social experiment on them. 
and they found that mice who didn't have the whiskers trimmed were a lot more interested in a stranger, like a strange mouse, a, a mouse that was not from their, their little collection. And they would want to sniff them, they'd stare at them, they'd observe their movements. They, were more, they had a higher social function than the mice that had the whiskers cut. They weren't bothered about this mouse. And they were like, oh, this is really interesting. Maybe it's got something to do with autism. I'm not being funny. I'm fully aware we share quite a lot of DNA with a mouse, but I've never seen a mouse do open heart surgery. I've never seen them drive to work. I've never shown up to a building looking to meet Mr. and Mrs. Smith and a couple of mice pop out of a hole in the wall. We're not the same. So how is cutting whiskers of a mouse related to a human with autism? You had to make, you had to create, it had to be a man-made process for these mice during their critical development times to lose everything that helps them learn what food is, spatial awareness, their location, what's safe, what isn't safe. You removed it. So you've altered them. So don't be surprised that they're altered afterwards. But don't dare talk about, oh, well, there was elevated levels in the hippocampus, which is the social function. You know, they, they were lacking oxytocin. And I think stop trying to find, you know, make two plus two equal 506. It's got nothing to do with autism at all. And there's even been better studies done which have proven that oxytocin we might lack, but some of us don't. It's non, it's inconclusive. And it was proven, more proven by someone at Stanford, uh, Karen Parker, I think her name was. It was proven by them that your oxytocin levels are driven more by your parents and their levels than it is if you're autistic or not. But in 2022, 2021, you've got these scientists over in China trying to link it to it. And it's like, if you've already got the proof, why are you now trying to find something else? And I get everything evolves. But while they're all messing about, the one thing that isn't evolving is help, assistance and living for autistic people in society today. It's not good, you know, but this, this, this sort of stuff is where, because they mentioned in the, in the report that they did, oh, this has gone to a, a review of our peers and it's ended up in this journal and people are talking about it. We might have found that there's a, a time to, you know, improve or introduce oxytocin levels at a certain time because that was what it was all about. It was if you add oxytocin to people at a certain time, it will reverse the effects of the social function obstacle that some of us have. I'm all right, thanks. I like the fact I don't have to socialise. But how does cutting the whiskers off a mouse attribute to the fact that I don't want to go to my uncle's party? It's absurd. And if you talk to some certain artistic people, they will say, we are the next step in evolution. They do. I've had chats with people over email about that, and they've said autistic people are the next step, and why wouldn't we be? Look at the state of the world. You've got people kicking off. They're, they're arguing over borderlines. They're, they're, they're obsessed with power. They're obsessed with status. They're obsessed with money. And then there's me who goes, hmm, can't wait to get home and get in my pyjamas. They're lovely and comfy. Oh, yeah, have a nice, nice shower and getting some nice fresh PJs. Yeah, that's living because I don't care about status, don't care about wealth, don't care how you see me. I just I just want to be all right. You know what I mean? So people say because we don't care about half of these things, we wouldn't have half of these problems. Therefore, surely we're the next step in evolution. That is not for me to decide. I will reserve judgment. But that's an area, isn't it? They're putting so much money. Autism makes money trying to figure out where autism comes from. And then you get your babies, then you get your infants. So when they move past that stage, and that's where you start to see so many specialists appear out the woodwork. I'm a baby and mother specialist for autistic babies. I, you know, I've got a DVD. I've got 406 self-help books. I've got online classes. Do face-to-face -face training. It's all money to be made. You know, once you get past that age, you've got children. And where do children with autism go these days? Specialist schools. They get to go to specialist autism schools that are built where they will get government grants, where they will get funding, where there are private 
autism schools where they're charging anywhere between seven and a half thousand to fifty thousand per term per child. That is not bad going for someone who just wants to help, is it? I don't know. You know, and I had a quick peek at um mobile applications to see about what apps are out there for autism, especially for adults. And I found there was an app on there for two hundred and twenty five dollars. I don't know about you, but I download my apps for free. <laughs> so when I see one, you know, off for six ninety nine, um, you know, come on, that's just an absurd price. And I found another one for thirty pound a month. That's an internet subscription. I'm not gonna, you know, so I, I either buy an app and have no internet, or I get the internet and I have no app. Absurd prices. So autism makes money. That is why we are not progressing in autism. And then what you'll notice is once it stops making money, they stop also. So you get to a certain age. That's why there's such limited resources for adults, because it's like, oh, no, no, no. We need to look at why people are born with it. We need to invest in kids and babies. You know, and this is why I've never benefited from help. <clears throat> when I was diagnosed with autism, the place I was diagnosed offered a sort of icebreaker with other autistic people, even though I said I don't do groups, I do one-on-one. -on -one. And that, that was over £100. I think it was like 150 quid to go and sit for an hour per person in a room with other newly diagnosed autistic people to talk about autism. No. You know, I went, to the, I went back to my doctor after my diagnosis. This was like a couple of years later, and I went, I've still never been in front of a human being who is trained in autism to talk to. I have nothing and no one. I don't get it. You know, I just need someone to speak my language for half an hour to help me out, and I will get so much out of that. And they put it to the medical board saying, I paid for it myself, I've gone down the route, and they just denied it. It's kind of like you have to make a scene to get seen, and it shouldn't be that way at all. I blend in the background and try my hardest, and when I need help, that's when I put my head above the, press of the parapet. <laughs> and I still don't get the help, so then that sends me back underground again, and that's not the way it's meant to be, and that's why autism doesn't progress. And my final point as to why autism doesn't progress, and I've said this so many times before, but experts do not know best. And what determines an expert in autism? A PhD, a bachelor's degree, something where they can go, oh, I went to university. That is not an expert in autism. An expert in autism is somebody who has autism and has the clarity to see both sides and not make irrational judgments based off how they think. That's how I, that's what I believe an artistic, that's what I believe an artistic expert to be. You've got to have it. You do. Because unless you have autism, you don't know what it's like having autism. And you can be invested. You can be passionate. You can read as many books as you want. You can do social observations. You can do the works and you can make that your life's passion. And you'll be good at what you do, but you won't be an expert. You, you just won't. I will always know more about autism without ever picking up a book from a doctor than you will after spending five years looking through those books because I have the advantage of feeling my autism, understanding my cognitive process of, from words I will never say. I know how it is. I, you know, you have to have controlled subjects. You have to see physical outbursts. You have to watch one end of a spectrum to another and don't see any of that middle ground. And it's, it's a blinkered view. And I'm not having a go because that's all you're presented with. I'm having a go at how society treats it. That is what gives it its credence and its clarity. But me sitting in a room or standing in a lecture theatre talking to professionals about why and how I do what I do, if it goes against the grain and written texts, I'm considered the anomaly. I'm considered incorrect. I'm wrong. Well, I don't match the majority of other artistic people. See, they make me wrong. I'm not wrong because I don't meet textbooks. Your textbooks are wrong because they don't meet me, because I'm artistic. And it's so difficult. You know, like my dog, for example, I can guess why he does what he does. 
and I can be accurate with my guesses, but the point is because he can never tell me. I'm just good at guessing. I'm not correct. I'm not going to be correct 100% of the time. And it's, it's frustrating because how would things progress for autistic people without autistic people at the wheel? And then we have to be careful with which autistic people we let drive as well because some have agendas. And this is why it's so important to notice that an expert in autism is someone with autism who can see both sides clearly and does not let their personal belief cloud their judgment when making a serious decision. That's an expert in autism. So autism makes money. And when it stops making money, they stop. And experts in autism, society thinks they know best. Autistic people know they don't. And I am a huge advocate of having your autism diagnosed by a professional, by an expert, because I think they've got enough in them for the diagnosis process. I don't think they've got enough in them to make the judgment moving forward that'll, that'll assist the lot of us. You know, And plus, because I feel like I have imposter syndrome, I'm a, I'm a great believer in having your autism diagnosed by someone else because I would never believe my own diagnosis because of the imposter syndrome. So I would have ended up in that very tricky predicament. So there we go. There's three points that I wanted to make. Okay. And the reason, the reason I find it all a problem with how they put so much interest in the youth of today, this is why I find it a problem is because when they're trying to figure out what causes autism, it's guesswork. That's why there's always going to be a bigger field in there, why people are always going to have something, prove it, and then somebody else a few years later tries to disprove it because it's just money to be made off guesswork. And you can guess all you want. You know, the proof is sat right here. You, you, you have not got any evidence of whiskers being cut on a mouse as to why I've led the life I've led. It doesn't tally up. And that's why they stop listening, isn't it? <laughs> you know, the, and the, the reason they invest so much in babies and infants is because you've got parents who care nine times out of 10. And I know some parents don't care. That's just life. You know, those sorts of people shouldn't really have kids. But um, what you end up with is caring parents worried for their child who doesn't fit the mold of normal children the neurotypical type of bringing that a child will do the crying the interaction the paying attention the things like that and they panic and the fearful and then you've got these many 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 specialists and coaches who crawl out the woodwork charge a fortune because they're praying this is where the money is they're praying on people's vulnerabilities and areas where they, and there will be genuine people who want to help. I'm aware of that. There's someone I follow on, on Instagram, who I believe is someone who actually cares. I believe they've got a vested interest in wanting to help people who are at that stage, but there's so many people who just take the, the mick and uh, I don't believe they're good for it at all. You know, and when it comes to infants with people, you know, the, you know, it's the lack of accuracy for me. You know, it's an infant. They've just, only just learnt to talk potentially. They might be misbehaving, but they're, they're walking, they're, they're using words, they're figuring themselves out. And then you've got that nurture over nature. What's their upbringing been like? They might have had parents who let them be raised feral. They might not have raised them disciplined and caring household. You know, so it's not, like I say, I've got all these points where it's not very accurate. So you've gone from trying to figure out why they're in the womb, why are they born with autism, then babies who can't speak, then infants who can't speak, then children who might have been nurtured wrong. Then it will raise to um, children who then go to autistic specialist schools who people are paying a fortune for the children to go in. And it all ends up with teenagers who've been entrenched in these cycles of autism that they don't get to live and breathe themselves. And they're given a false narrative that when they get old enough, this world should do this. This world should do that. And that's why I say there's a lot of should. Never say should. Never. You know, oh, well, they should do this. If you're going to use that word, that sentence should not be said because it's so hard. It gives you then the young adults that we've got today using the word should. 
well, society should do this. I shouldn't have to work because they should make it easier for me. I agree with you, but that doesn't help you at all. That's you just complaining because you're not getting what you want. And I get it. You've been raised a certain way to believe that you should be entitled to what you want. And I'm with you because I want it too. But I know the world doesn't work like that. So that's why I find it a problem is putting so much effort and attention into the youth leads to adults who are not adjusted to the world that they will live in. And the reason they're so focused on that, and this is why they stop listening when they get to a certain age, when they become an adult, is because it doesn't make them money anymore. So they repeat the process again. And then they'll go, oh, we've got this new bit of research and it will never, ever get better. And it just creates people who don't know where to go and what to do. So it doesn't work. This is why autism is not progressing. Which leads me to my next point. My next pipe. My next bit and point, I think I was trying to say at the same time. And that is the solution. The solution. What is it? What can we do? And it's very simple. And it's so simple. I think all these experts, professionals, people doing all these bits of research, they are throwing the head in the sand, putting it over the rears and pretending people like me won't exist because we come up with the most simple solution of how you rectify all of this. Paul wants autism to progress. Paul wants things to be better for people in the workplace. Paul wants people to have a better understanding of what autism is. So what do you do? You talk to Paul. I'm not saying me in that, by the way. What I mean is you're doing it back to front. You are doing it the wrong way around. Stop focusing on pre-birth. Stop focusing on babies and children. Focus on people who have been on earth for a good while. Focus on people who have led lives. Focus on people who have been married, who have had children, who have had fallouts, who have worked, who have been in horrible workplaces, who have basically lived a life with autism. Because we can actually sit down, we can actually talk to you, we can tell you all the things that have gone wrong, why they've gone wrong. We, have, we are actually a voice. And what's crazy is nobody wants to hear this voice. Nobody wants to pay attention. Nobody wants to use us as research. Nobody wants to use what we say with any ounce of clarity or give it any bit of credence to say, maybe they know best. And we do. And it isn't a case of young people looking at older people going, okay, boomer, because they've got nothing better to say. Just like old people shouldn't be telling young people, oh, you just need to buy a house. You know, that's nonsense. Houses don't cost 30 grand anymore. You know, just because there's generational differences, it doesn't mean we can't learn from each other. If I, you know, like they say, oh, you want to know us when you need a PDF printing off? Yeah, old people do need younger people because you've got 10 years experience playing on computers. They've just got a mobile phone. Help them. Just like older people should help younger people understand the world. Because it's hella changed. Uh, it's changed during my time too much. You know, I've got, I've, I'm walking the streets now looking at people dressed away where I was around for all of those fashion trends, you know. And some of them I wasn't. Like there was a girl I walked past yesterday and she was wearing like a 90s hoodie, like this big Adidas hoodie that Liam Gallagher used to wear back in the day. And flares, they don't go. <laughs> That's two different things, but... We've been around a bit, you know? So never mind your PhDs. Keep them in the drawer. No one's interested, all right? Like I say, the older people who've been around have suffered adversity, and that's what you've got to pay attention to. You sit them down and you ask this one simple question to people like me. If you could do it all again, what would you do differently? And I promise you, you'll be inundated with great answers. I, me, simple little me with my little corner of YouTube where I do these little videos. I've learned so much off the people who will watch my channel from comments, interactions, emails, so much because I allow, I allow myself to get educated by others. So I learn. And the things people tell me, people who are older than me and they've said, if I could have my time again, I love my family, I love my children, but I wouldn't have done that. 
if I knew I didn't have to follow societal norms, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have lived with someone. You know, I wouldn't have stayed invested in certain jobs when I really thought I had to work and I had to pay them bills and I had to stay in a certain place to earn that pension. I'd have gone anywhere else to make me happier. You know, and it's amazing to hear how other people would have lived if they'd have put their autism first. But society didn't allow that back then. Now it does. You can be whoever you want and whatever you want now. It's a different world. But we will learn. And what we will learn from how people tell you these stories, you know, like I, they wish that they could have cut ties with, with toxic people and how they would have not dealt with family members who were actually quite adverse to their autism. But because autism was seen as a bad thing, they stuck in and tried to make the best with their family. Whereas today they sit here and go, I'd have just closed the door on them and thought, if you don't want to support me, I don't need to be around you. It's amazing to hear stories and the people who have them are the people with the experience. And the only way autism is going to change, in my opinion, listening to this older guy, is if we sit down and ask that question, what would you do if you could do things differently? knowing what you know now. If we sat there and we listened and we took notes and we did that as a research and we spread that out across a range of people, whatever your age, whatever, well, yeah, older people, but whatever, you know, your color, your sex, whatever you want to call it. If we just took a lot of people, we are going to find much more detailed, pinpoint accurate points and things and reasons which cause problems and to why they cause a problem. And we're going to be able to build the diagnosis process much better. And then learning from older people helps it trickle down to the next. Drop it down another 10 years. Do it again. Drop it down another 10 years. Do it again. Keep it going. Keep it rolling. Keep learning. And you will find the triggers that you can then create better for young adults, for teenagers, for children, for infants, for babies, and for how parents can prepare for bringing these children in the world. You do it back to front. You don't do it from pre-birth to now because they, they forget about us once we can grow a beard. All right, so I firmly believe we need to work it backwards. And I genuinely believe, in my opinion, that that is the solution. And the reason it's important to do now is because me, my age, I'm the last generation or the first generation, whatever way you want to look at it, who came into adulthood without the internet, without the need for a phone, without the need for technology. And now everything is so deeply entrenched in, in technology that there is this new generation who've known nothing but, so they don't know how to see the real world. They can't see the wood for the trees because there's a computer in the way of it. I can offer you a perspective that the greatest talkers today who are 25 years old can't unless they were raised without the technology, unless they had controlled times on technology. I had to go to libraries to find things out. I couldn't just type it in Google. If I wanted to know certain things, I had to get up and go and find out. And I think we and people older than me especially, because I'm not saying it's my generation who are the ones that we need to talk to. I'm saying keep it going, you know, because we wear battle scars anyway. I've said it before, my face isn't my face. All these laughter lines are fake, from fake laughing for people trying to blend into a society. Prenatal scans, cutting whiskers off mice ain't going to tell you that, but I can. That's why to find the solution to progress autism today, we need to reverse it. We need to talk to older people, trickle it down, find the patterns there. And we'll get somewhere. And maybe, and this was this getting somewhere will benefit all of us, not just a couple, and it'll stop all this nonsense that keeps happening around the world, cutting whiskers off mice, thinking it has something to do with me sat here talking to you today. I hope that made sense. And I will thank you for watching, and I'm going to go and get some food. And until next time, my friends, keep smiling.